What is Sync Enterprise? To really explain, I'll take some SOLIDWORKS models, bring them into Composer, create some step-by-step -step procedures, and export those as a couple different deliverables. Now, this whole process is automatable using Sync Enterprise. Using Sync Enterprise, we can export the SOLIDWORKS models as a Composer project, compile that together, and produce our outputs. Those outputs can be automated when the SOLIDWORKS design is updated. So here, I've went ahead and logged into the Enterprise PDM Vault, and I'm going, going to be working with some SOLIDWORKS files and some Composer files. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain how to set this up manually, and then I'm going to show how we set it up using Sync Enterprise. So basically, we have a Composer Project folder here. In this folder, I have three different folders. The first folder is going to be the actual Composer files, a project folder and a folder for the subassemblies. When I export using Sync, I'm going to take the SOLIDWORKS subassemblies and export them all at the same time using Sync Enterprise. Now, if you didn't have Sync Enterprise, you can still create this process, but those have to be exported individually. So that would be going in with SOLIDWORKS, going into the subassemblies and exporting them individually. Once we have all of these assemblies exported, then we can compile them together using a SOLIDWORKS Composer project, which is seen here. So it's basically, think of it like a SOLIDWORKS top assembly. We have this assembly file that's linking to subassemblies. Well, here we have a Composer project that's linking to Composer subassemblies. On the left here, we have the steps of the process and some assembly instructions. Just like in a standard Composer SMG, a project works much the same way, where we can create step-by-step -step assembly instructions, export this as vectorized and raster outputs, animations, you name it. Anything you can do with a SOLIDWORKS Composer SMG, you can do with a SOLIDWORKS Composer project. The only difference is this project is actually linking to other Composer documents. Now we're going to use Sync Enterprise to update those documents, which will in turn update the project automatically. From there we can choose to manually export our publications or use Sync to automate that export. Going back to the subassemblies folders, we can take a look at these guys here. So if I open one of these up, just open one at random here, you'll see that there are some views on the left, right? So when we first export this, you're not going to get these views automatically. I created these views manually. And so what I did is simply maybe isolated a component and then took a snapshot of that, renamed it, and left it that way. That way, when this project or these components are published, I'll have an image for every view that's on the left here. The same goes in the project, that step-by-step -step assembly instructions. I'm going to get images for every step of that process. So by simply exporting, diving in, creating some, some basic steps, creates the structure for the final output. Okay, well, let's go ahead and back up here. We'll take a look at the deliverables. And what the deliverables I have um, in this situation is I have a folder, so a publication folder. So here in the deliverables folders, I have a publication folder. In this folder, it's just going to be images exported from both the Composer project and the subassembly documents. These can be used anywhere, thrown into a Word document, used on a website, marketing, you name it. Basically, this is a folder of images that have been exported from Composer that you can use in various publications. These images will remain linked back to the original SOLIDWORKS design. So when that is updated, these are updated as well. Going back a step, if I jump into, let's say, this Excel document, and again, the Excel document is just an example of a shell program that we can use to import these images in. We have something like this. So we have a main assembly, our individual parts, and uh, if I were to click on one of these links, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Composer model. So I can, I can have these linked directly to the 3D model, so I can jump in, spin it around, measure it, you name it. Right now I have this opening up in Composer. I can have this open up in the player as well. Say that we didn't have Composer installed, we can use a free player to view these models and basically get a lot of the same controls. Here I have a link to the project as well. Click on this guy up here, and I can open up the project, 
and see the step-by-step -step assembly instructions live. Let's see if I just hit play, it's going to go ahead and play through these steps. You can actually view an interactive animation using Composer or the player. Any given time we can stop it, rotate it around, take a look at different angles, maybe zoom in, get a better feel for what's going on. The other example I have here is a Word document. This Word document is linking to the same pictures, the same images that have been exported from Composer and are associated back to the SOLIDWORKS design. And you'll see here we just have some basic step-by-step -step assembly instructions. And keep in mind when you look at these that there's no words. The purpose of Composer is to tell a story and to relay information with as few as words as possible. The less words you have, the less you have to translate. You know, people like to see pictures. People like to have that visual feedback of what's going on, and that's what Composer provides. Okay, so I'm going to close that down. Let's go ahead and create this on the fly. So here I have a test folder. And I have some folders in here that are totally blank. See, these folders, they're just empty spaces that we can use to create a project. So if I, if I were starting from scratch here, and this is using Sync Enterprise to develop this, this project, I have a batch file here that opens up Sync Enterprise. We'll see it right up at the top here, 3D via Sync Enterprise. And I'm going to use this to start creating this project. And I'll show you how easy this actually is. So basically, we'll jump back into the vault. And let's go ahead and pull up our SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So here we have the top level SOLIDWORKS assembly. I could bring this in, but then everything would be tied to that top level assembly. And if I wanted to update anything down the road, I would have to update everything. Now, in most situations, this works. But if we're dealing with huge assemblies, some of our clients use, you know, 15 plus gig assemblies with, you know, maybe 30 sub assemblies right under that top, you know, top level assembly. Now at that time, if you update one of the sub assemblies, it would be nice to be able to drive that into the publications without updating everything. And so that's what I'm going to show in this example. So here is our sub assembly files. Now I go to publish, and you'll see how easy this interface is. I mean, basically I'm saying, these are the files I'm using, and this is what I'm going to do with them. So here I'm going to say publish, and I want to push these to a folder that I have access to. So let's jump back into the vault here. I have this test folder, and I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to push this to the subs folder. So these are going to be the subassembly exports from Composer. In Composer, if you're familiar with the Composer structure, there's a couple different file types. The main file type is SMG. Well, we're going to be dealing with a project, but the project you can't use an SMG. You have to use an SMG XML, which is basically the same thing. It's just extracted to have access to all the individual files within that SMG file. I'm also going to go ahead and say update. So I can use the same sync batch file to not only create my project, but then to update it later on. I'm going to say always override. That way if there's a change, we can override the old files, keep everything, all those links associated. The rest of these options, for this purpose, we don't even need. This is all we need for creation and update. We'll get into the rest here when we actually do, a, do publication. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now if I say translate, what it's going to do, and this is going to take a minute or two, depending on the size of the assembly, but it, it's going to jump into every single one of those SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So basically open it up in SOLIDWORKS and export it as an SMG XML file um, into my chosen directory. All right, so you'll see that the process is finished. It has taken one minute and 21 seconds. Let's go ahead and close Sync Enterprise. We don't need that at this time anymore. And let's see what, uh, what we have. So here's our files that we just created. So quite a few files here, a minute and 20 seconds, even faster than doing it manually. Best part is you don't have to do it manually. Opening up one of these at random, we have a Composer sub-assembly. Now, this is what you get when you first bring these into Composer. And depending on your document default settings, this might come in a little different. You know, maybe you have it set to, you know, say like smooth with outlines or perspective and, you know, white background or maybe a gradient background or something like that. Most of the time, we recommend to, you know, create a default view. So something like this, something that just shows all the components 
something that we can use in marketing or assembly, you know, top level assembly or something like that. Now, once we have that, we can create individual isolated component views. And to do that, we would click on a model, tell it to isolate, and now we have an isolated view of that individual part. Going to the assembly tree, I can easily tell what that part's name is just by clicking on it. Let's see, this is part of the vertical pivot subassembly, and it's this part right here. So I'd go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and copy that name and go to our views, create a new view, and paste that. Just like that. Now we have a isolated part with its name. F2 will highlight the name, we copy it, and click the button, control V for pasting, we have the name in there. Super easy to do. And by creating these, we'll, when we run the batch file, we'll have images of these items that we're isolating. And simply would save it, close it, good to go. Okay, so now these are the subassembly components. Now, I need to create a project. And unfortunately, this is a manual process. There's no way to automate this at this time. However, it's so easy to do that maybe it doesn't even need to be automated. Really, all we're going to do is open Composer, go into, say, a new project. Now we have to say where this project's going to be saved at. So again, jumping it back into the EPDM vault, and we'll put it under project, just like that. We could rename it, I'll just name the, keep the default name there. Say okay, now that creates that project. Now it's saying, okay, what additional files do you want to bring into this project? We want the subfiles that we just created. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them, say open, brings every single one into this project, and just like that, we've created our first project. And at this point, I mean, we could be done with this project and never have to touch it again. And just use it as a reference viewing this full um, assembly. Something like that. We're done. We now have a project that's linking to our sub uh, folders. And now if we wanted to publish that, we would simply jump back into Sync Enterprise and create a publication bin file. So here, jump back into the vault. This time, instead of bringing in the SOLIDWORKS assemblies, I'm going to bring in the Composer SMG files. Bring them into the files that we're going to be dealing with. So for publish, now I have a ton of options here. So where do I want to save this? Well, you know, let's go ahead and put this. I uh, will say that this is going to be the publication folder. And, you know, I can export maybe a, a series of F SMG files. Uh, create the EXE, or there are self-executable player files. You can send that to anybody. They don't have to have anything installed. They can view these EXE files, and they can view the 3D content, animation, step-by-steps, all that interactively. For this purpose, I'm going to say I just want some JPEGs. And uh, where I want them is in that publication folder. Later on, when I re-export these JPEGs, I wanted to update, which all you have to do is just say always overwrite, and that will be done. Now, going into some of our other options here, for instance, image configuration, this is this is really cool. So, what I can do is say, um, you know, use the internal views, which is the views that I created, but also, I want an isometric view. Um, maybe I want a front view and a right view as well. So, it's going to dive into each one of those Composer documents, those Composer SMG XML files, and it's going to take a front view, a right view, an isometric view, and any of the views that I created, and it will use those to create images. And I'll keep those updated down the road. And translate. Now this will take another minute, maybe minute 20 like the last one, and uh, it's going to create some publications, some images that I, I told it to push out. All right, it's done. It only took 25 seconds this time. And it's because it's not updating the actual geometry, just pushing out images. Let's close these down and take a look at what was created. So you'll see that we have isometric views. We should have some, yeah, some front views and some right views because that's what I told it to push out when I had those checkboxes. I'm going to transition from our test folder back to the original project that I had at the beginning. Um, because I would like to show how, how this updates more of a real world situation here. So again, here's our project examples our deliverables, publications, 
with the, image, with the documents linking back. So if I were to now jump into SolidWorks and make a change in SolidWorks and show how that updates down the road. I'm going to open up the SolidWorks top level assembly. And let's go ahead and make some changes to the model. Now, I don't have any design changes that really need to be made here, so I'm just going to make some random changes. Let's go ahead and say that uh, we have a cut through the model. Um, you know, let's go ahead and say that we're going to change this color to red. I just, I just want to make some visual changes just to show how this is going to update in the final document. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we need a hole here. Here, We can go ahead and just cut a hole in the side. And again, I'm not going to be too precise here because I just want to, you know, just want to, sh for example purposes. And let's go ahead and change the color of this one as well. Let's make it a bright color so we can really see that, that change. All right, so I could go all day and make a ton of changes to this, but, you know, we get the point here. The changes made in SOLIDWORKS will trickle down the road and update the final publications. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close and save this SOLIDWORKS assembly. And now if we go back to the, the Composer project, we'll see that nothing has been updated. Right, we haven't told the SOLIDWORKS change to update to those individual Composer projects. Now, the manual method of this would be to open up those projects in Composer and, tell, and go to File Update for each individual sub-assembly so they update. Then that would be reflected in the project. Well, with Sync Enterprise, we can automate that to update all those at the same time just saving time, you know, saving re repetitive steps of going in and updating those one at a time. So let's jump back into Sync Enterprise. And this is going to be that mass export and update file. So this, this is the same file that was used to originally create those SMG XML files. We can use this to now overwrite those ones with the latest SOLIDWORKS information. All right, so that took one minute, 21 seconds, and what just happened is I just updated all, all the Composer project files with the current SOLIDWORKS design. Now I want to take those Composer project files and export them as, a, as images, video, you name it. And I'll do that here by clicking Translate and running the sync batch file to do so. Okay, so that took 37 seconds. And that process here, without sync, we would go and we would open up the individual SOLIDWORKS subassembly. We would go into the individual composer subassemblies and say uh, publish images and actually export the images all at once. We would have to do that for each individual composer file. And using sync, did all that all that at the same time. Now we go to our deliverables publications, and we'll see how these images have now been updated with the changes that were made in SOLIDWORKS. Now if I go to the, maybe the Word file or the Excel file, and we'll see how the changes are automatically here as well. Now this would be for anything. Anything these images are used in uh, would update. Anything that, uh, you know, the, the final publication, maybe it was an interactive document, that would be updated as well. So it keeps everything in sync with the original CAD design all the way down to publication, hence the name uh, Sync Interval. Well, that's all I had for today. Thank you for watching.